Today we're going to be unboxing a new bike to us called the Be Cool Adventurer. It's a full suspension e-bike, 26 by 4 inch fat tires. The rear suspension has 180 millimeters of travel, so it's almost like a real true downhill mountain bike. So I'm pretty excited to see what it's all about. Thanks to the folks over at Be Cool Bikes for sending this to us so that we can unbox it and test it. Let's get this box open. All right, while Andrew works on that, let's see what's in this box. Got some pedals. Got some instructions. The instructions actually look pretty decent. Good grammar so far. All right, passes my test. Those are above average. Good job, Be Cool. And there's the charger. Nice plug. All right, we finished assembling the Adventure by Be Cool Bikes. Now we're gonna walk through this bike and point out some of the features that we like about this bike and some of the features that we find kind of meh. First, it's got a half twist throttle on here with also a kill switch, so that's kind of cool. You can turn it on and off. It's got a speed shifter for the thumb designed by Shimano. Comes with a black and white display on here, a horn on the side with some turn signals. As far as the turn signals go, uh, good effort, but uh, the execution, not super great. Let's take a look at these turn signals. So like, as you can see, it's two little itty bitty LED lights. Let's go on the other side. Nice try, but uh, not very functional. Let's keep going. Absolutely. It's got a really comfy seat. So this looks like a traditional seat, but it, it's definitely a gel seat in there. So I'm sure my butt will be happy when I'm done with it. It also comes with aluminum pedals. It does have a 48 volt by 21 amp hour battery on here. Comes in right at 1,008 watt hours and also has rear and front suspension. The rear suspension has 180 millimeters of travel. That's almost as much as a downhill mountain bike. So downhill mountain bikes traditionally have about 210 millimeters of travel. This is on the upper end coming in with 180 millimeters of rear end travel. So just slightly underneath the downhill mountain bike, but pretty much a par up to par with all the full suspension mountain bikes that are enduro type. So you can lock out the front suspension too. You can adjust um, the dampering on it. It's pretty nifty. Still doesn't look like the highest end front suspension, but should do, definitely do the trick. We've got 26 by four inch fat tires. Also has quick release here. So has a quick release pin on the front tire so you can easily get the front tire off if you need to lo load it into a vehicle. The front and rear come with hydraulic brakes with 160 millimeter brake disc on them. I can already tell by this light, it's not gonna be that great. It's basically an LED light in there with a, a little globe to make it look bigger than it actually is. This is a 750 watt motor with a peak output of 1000 watts. It also produces 80 newton meters of torque and comes with a Shimano Turney derailleur as well. The other thing that you guys should know about the bike that we received, the paint on it is a little chipped. You can see it's flaking right there. And then there is one, one other area we found where the paint was kind of damaged. And you can see that there. So those are pretty deep gouges. It's not going to affect the performance of the bike, but just to let you know, these things happen during shipping. This is a big item to ship. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna charge it up and then take it for a ride. All right, it's the next day. The bike's all charged up. It's cold, it's a little rainy, but uh, we're gonna head over to the state park. Andrew, tell us what you like about this. Yeah, I love the fat tires on this bike, especially on these type of loose gravel trails. I love the Shimano components on here. It also has a nice really throttle, twist throttle on here, which is a half twist. Very responsive, just like the cadence sensor, it's very responsive as well. I do love that this display actually shows the watt output. So depending on how hard you're pedaling and how hard of pedal assist you're utilizing, it'll show you the watt output. 
The color is amazing. I love this green color. I do love that it's full suspension, but there are some pitfalls to it. I love the brakes on this thing. They're no name brands. I have no idea what they are. They are hydraulic brakes, but they modulate very well. And the battery is massive for an e-bike. We normally find e-bikes come with like 9.6 amp hour batteries, 15 amp hour batteries. This is a 48 volt, 21 amp hour battery. So just over a thousand watt hours. So pretty massive battery for an e-bike. All right, the sun's coming out now. It's starting to warm up. We're feeling good. Really do like the display. You can see it in the sunlight. We talked about the sun coming out and uh, you can really read that with the sun still out. You can see the readings just fine. Comes in in a class of budget fat tire e-bike that gets you into the sport of fat tire e-biking. But because it is budget, there are some drawbacks to this bike that we're gonna talk about at our next stop. All right, let's keep riding. We're here doing an unofficial speed test. This is a full throttle test. Andrew, how fast are you going just on full throttle? 23.4 miles per hour. But I can also do 23.4 no-handed, so that's pretty good. Well, that's Andrew's no-hand test, all right? All right, we've lived by this park for years and we've never taken that trail, but that is what the Be Cool bike did. It's the adventure and it took us on quite the adventure so that we could see this beautiful beach. We've got it all to ourselves. It's a little chilly right now, so we're not gonna go in the water, but what we are going to do is talk about the things that we don't like about this bike. Starting off, for me, these leather, faux leather hand grips. The thing is, when you're riding around on different terrain, potentially rough terrain, you want something that's a little more grippy. And this could get a little slippery. The other thing that I had issues with is the fit and finish overall. You know, no matter how much we tried, some of these things just don't line up. For example, the fender is a little bit off in the front and the back. Ideally, you'd want this tail light to be, the middle of this yeah, to be centered, but then it's not centered with the tire. And then the last thing, the paint job. The color is great, but it's scratched up or it's flaking in parts. Probably happened during shipping, so they could possibly double box it, package it a little bit better. I can't get this display to lock into place. No matter how hard I tighten it, it just wants to move up and down. It's not the worst thing in the world, but that is obnoxious. The light on this thing is not very bright. It's kind of, uh, it's got two LEDs on it and it's got like a weird dome on it. Not good for safe night riding. The suspension on the front, it's easy to bottom out. I've tried adjusting it all the way to one end, all the way to the other end. It doesn't feel like it changes it. It still just compresses underneath my weight. And I weigh close to 200 pounds. However, this is supposed to be rated for over a thousand pounds. So I think it's something off on the suspension or it's just not really rated correctly. As he's talking about fit and finish, like Jimmy was saying, the battery on this doesn't line up completely straight. So if you look at this side, smooth. But if you look at this side, if this is considered a commuter bike, it's fine. If this is considered a mountain bike and I'm gonna send it off jumps, I want this as even as possible and weight distributed as equally as possible. The torque sensor, like we said earlier, works really good. It's really responsive, but there's just some weird delay afterwards. So it's really fast to respond, but sometimes it'll keep going afterwards, which we've seen on other bikes. And then sometimes it just doesn't pick up after you've been riding really hard and then you stop and then go to ride, it doesn't engage. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if it's some, some type of quality control issue on this bike. The other thing is gonna be the turn signal indicators. They're not very bright at all either. Um, so they added turn signal indicators onto this bike, but they're pretty worthless. A lot of things that we talked about are kind of nitpicky, things that you, you know, aren't surprised to see in a budget e-bike. If you want to get your hands on something that is affordable, this is certainly it. Just expect to, for it to come with little things that might be annoying, that might need you to tinker around with to get it up to speed. At our next stop, we're going to talk about who this bike is for. We've been taking the Be Cool Adventurer through an adventure. We've done trails, we've gone around this lake, we've gone along the beach, we've gone on sand, we've gone on the road. Now Andrew's gonna take it up this hill just using throttle just to see what kind of hill climbing capabilities this bike has. Now this is just throttle only. Well, wasn't terrible. That wasn't bad. Yeah, I, I slowed down because there's a couple little bumps on there. Earlier I slowed down to kind of hop them, but if I just rolled over them, which it's easy to do with the big fat tires, it did climb it up pretty well. All right, now it's my turn to be cool on this cool day. The 
main problem I have with the assist is that it stops way too slow. There's certainly a delay. And so I'll, I'll be pedaling and I'll want it to stop, but it'll just keep going. And uh, so definitely tough if you need to navigate crowds and through, you know, close quarters. There is a walk mode, which is helpful. Um, still, the walk mode is not perfect. And to turn on the walk mode, what you do is you hold down on the down button for a time. The walk mode will kick in and it'll just kind of take itself. You still hold on to it. The problem is it's more like a jog mode because I don't know anyone that walks this fast. Whoa, here it goes. And uh, you can't, it, this is the speed. You can't slow down. So like I said, this is, this is jog mode, right? All right, this is it doing itself. <laughs> and then to turn it off, you hit on the brakes and it'll stop. So that is uh, be cool walk mode, more like a jog mode. And then the other issue is it doesn't stop. So normally walk mode, you press on it. If you let go of the button, it stops. This one keeps going unless you press on the brake. So that's the one issue I have with it. All right, Andrew, who do you think the Be Cool Adventure is best for? This is a perfect bike for someone who's looking at the Venton Adventure, but wants full suspension and just wants to hit pretty much all trains you want to go on. The only thing that I don't think this is designed for is what I think it was originally thought what I thought it was for, a full suspension mountain bike. This will never replace my full suspension mountain bike. However, this is perfect for cruising around town, cruising on sand, cruising on loose gravel. This is going to eat up all those springs. Electric fat tire e-bikes are amazing. They're a ton of fun. Even a budget e-bike like the Be Cool Adventurer. If you guys want to learn more, check out our full written review at ebikepedia.com. We appreciate you and your support. Thanks for all the thumbs up you give the channel. And remember, when you ride, wear your safety gear.